Hello, David Mettler again, Renaissance Companies, Manager of Construction Technology. Uh, okay, so this is part two of connecting uh, Revit to MySQL. Uh, the last part uh, is was all about setting up the remote server uh, with MySQL uh, using Digital Oceans, which is the provider that I'm using. And then uh, I gave instructions on how to uh, set up the MySQL or at least a link to getting it. And then the other thing I have, uh, let's make a little note here. Um, I also found this in my notes from before uh, of the allowing access to the MySQL. This was critical uh, in my success of getting this to work uh, through Dynamo is uh, you have to be able to allow uh, people to access the remote remotely the MySQL because of all the security on it. So once I got this working, I uh, was able to successfully write to the uh, remote database. And I put all this into my notes. If you go into uh, part one, I put a lot of notes in there and actually put in the steps uh, I used to uh, set all the databases and stuff up on, well, not all the databases, but to at least set up the accessibility uh, for the database. So this one is part two. So part two is going into Dynamo and doing the connection itself. So uh, again, uh, to try to avoid sharing my passwords and stuff, I'm going to use this example. Uh, this was a search I just did, uh, you know, connecting MySQL uh, on the uh, Dynamo website. And uh, this is a great example. This is actually, I'm pretty sure, the example I used uh, to get it working. Uh, now, it took me quite a while to get this to work out, but it was all because of the permissions uh, weren't set up properly on the server. Uh, it gave me some error codes and stuff, which uh, it took me a while to figure out, and they weren't very helpful error codes. But once I got past it, it all pointed to being a permission issue. So uh, once you set up your uh, digital uh, oceans uh, server, you'll be given this uh, IP address information. So that's all I used is that IP address. I used the default port. Uh, 3306 is the default port that MySQL uses. This would be uh, the username that you had set up the permissions so uh, to, that you're allowing uh, to have remote access to the database. And uh, so basically, the two key pieces of this information with this user ID is to have that's where you, it's just, I put this into the steps on part one, is that you need to have the username and then you need to have the IP address of the machine that's going into that remote server, uh, pre-set up on the server. That was kind of the key ingredient here. Uh, so uh, just shoot me a question if you uh, need a little more clarity on that. But basically, this would be the username that you set up with the IP address on the MySQL database, if that makes sense. And then the password, obviously. And then I just use these exact same uh, timeouts on this. And uh, so uh, we'll go right into my script that I used. So here we are back to Revit uh, 2020. Um, and I'll open the Dynamo script here. So uh, obviously my connection, oops, kind of zoom out there too far. My connection. So this is that same example I was just showing you. Uh, so that information. Uh, happens that little um, connection string happens over there. I kind of hit it because it's got my passwords on it. So uh, basically, setting up the databases. Now you have a couple ways to do this. Um, I kind of uh, you could do it through Workbench directly. You could come in here and say, you know, create the database, create all the fields in the database, and all that. I did it through, I guess maybe a, um, a glutton for punishment. But I did it in uh, Dynamo. So I actually tested these and uh, I'll post these in the notes section of this video. Um, but I actually did this within Dynamo to be able to write out uh, command lines via the code block. So uh, I did test this stuff out and it did work. Um, basically, this is how I created the table. And, you know, to be honest, I'm not a big, uh, I don't use Workbench that much. And I thought once I got the the workings of it worked out. Uh, it was a lot easier to do it here because you can see the code is pretty pretty simplistic 
so once I got it working, it was a lot easier to do it through here. Um, so uh, that's pretty much step one was creating the database. Step two, uh, I don't know what's, why is that step two? <laughs> is Oh, second step, use the database. Okay, so this was critical. The use database was uh, to make sure that you're using this current database that you set up. Uh, that took me a little while to figure out as well. And then uh, create the table, which creates uh, essentially all these uh, different fields within the table. Now, if I come over here, you can see this uh, var character. So each of the, I don't know if everybody's familiar with MySQL, but you have to kind of tell each one of these uh, lines or columns in the table what it is, basically. And that's where you set up var characters, kind of like a string. You can set the length of the string. And then uh, this uh, ID field is an internal field for uh, MySQL. And uh, if you'll notice in my script, um, you see I have it set up as auto increment, so it automatically will number. And then also I made it the primary key. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about MySQL. Uh, I've been tinkering with it, I would say. Uh, so I don't know a whole lot about it, but uh, I just know that it works. And uh, anyway, uh, I just know you need to have the ID field. It's very important. And then you know set it as a primary key. Uh, other than that, you'll have to do your own research on it. The other piece to get this all working with uh, taking out all of your data out of Revit, uh, I found was once you create the database, you need to be able to insert uh, the information into the database. So this is kind of, these are all my little test things. Um, and I have my little notes here. Uh, and you can see my, uh, you'll get a null, null uh, note there, but basically, this is the main script that uh, will insert. So once you create your database, your table, um, this was the main script that took me a while to figure out because uh, initially I was able to write, uh, this is my test. Initially I was only able to write numbers and it took me a while and it was all, it all had to do with how the quotes, the unquotes, uh, you can see I have the concatenate uh, in here, so I'm adding stuff into here. This was all to get to a command line. And uh, if I, I'm not going to run the whole thing, I'll disconnect that. And I'll do a quick run. So uh, when you see all this plugged in together, this is actually, if you do research on MySQL, this is kind of what the command line will look like. Um, See how long it takes. Hopefully it doesn't take too long because I lost my pause button. There it is. So uh, basically uh, putting all that together, you can kind of see this is what it looks like after the fact. So, uh, you know, insert into, that's the database. This is the table within the database. And then you can see all of those. Uh, it's telling it where each one of those items to go. Uh, so each one of these are it's going into a, its own column and then it says fill it with these values and so this is the values that you get out of your Revit model and uh, you can see right here is a good example this is where I had the feet and inches and I had to add this uh, backslash in order to I guess kind of it's a lot of programming you'll end up doing a lot of funky characters uh, to get something to show up the way you want it to show up and in this case, I think it's what it's doing is it's telling it to ignore the first one, but then look at the second one because you needed to have uh, the double quote uh, basically in there to be able to write a single quote, if that makes sense. So uh, again, uh, this this is what it took for me to get it to work to be able to put in uh, the strings into the database. And again, uh, if I go back to that, you'll see that that should be the first the interior so you can see the the 1957 so that that's that uh that first one if i can get back to too many windows open so 195712 so uh one of the things i haven't figured out yet is uh to round this number uh it's pretty funny i did a rounding um in here i actually told it to round it down uh uh, you can see this is a little crazy. I asked it to round it down, uh, thinking it was being driven out of uh, Dynamo. There it is, math round. Uh, 
but then I got it correct in my statement over here, but then by the time it kicked it back out through, I have it, I have a feeling it hap It does something in the code block itself. It goes back to showing uh, all of the precision. So that one's just something I still have to work out, figure out with uh, code block. But um, anyways, uh, I think I probably used up enough time on this video. So just to recap, this is how I connected to the MySQL database out of Dynamo. And um, I don't know, I guess the, uh, if I do, I'll do a part three to show you how I can use the data uh, with the tool that I found, uh, Electro CRUD uh, tool that uh, shows, I'll show you how I uh, can actually use the data once it's in the database. Thanks guys.